In this video, uh, we'll solve the um, second order linear homogeneous equation with constant coefficients, and we'll consider the case of two complex conjugate roots. That's uh, b squared minus 4ac negative. So with our usual ansatz x equals e to the rt, we end up with uh, a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero. And uh, with b squared minus 4ac equals zero, we have two roots, which we can write in the form r1 equals lambda, which is minus b over 2a, plus i times mu, where mu is then um, the square root of 4ac minus b squared over 2a. And then we also have the complex conjugate root. Okay. So in the previous uh, video, I showed how to construct a real solution using these two complex exponentials. I'll show you uh, another method of doing that that's a little bit uh, simpler. Uh, um, and maybe uh, a bit uh, more direct. So we can use the principle of superposition to construct two real solutions. So here we have, now we have two complex solutions to our uh, ODE. We have e to the r1t, so we'll call, since it's complex, we'll call that z1, which is e to the uh, r1t, right? e to the r1t is e to the lambda plus i mu times t, right? lambda and mu are real, so we can write that as e to the lambda t times e to the i mu t. So a real exponential and, an, and a um, complex exponential. The uh, second solution is e to the r 2 t and the same way we can write that as e to the lambda t times e to the minus i mu t. Okay? Um, we want to find real solutions to the differential equation. A, B, C are real. The initial conditions are going to be real. So we expect x to be real. We can find two independent real solutions by just forming linear combinations of z1 and z2, which are solutions because of the principle of superposition. So which linear combinations we should find? Well, we can use the fact that cosine theta we can write as e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2, right? And sine theta, we can write as e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i. So we can construct from complex exponentials, we can construct real functions by taking these particular sort of linear combinations. So here we have an e to the i mu t and an e to the minus i mu t. So we can add them and divide by 2 to get a cosine, we can subtract them and divide by 2i to get a sine. So here we construct our real solutions by z1 plus z2 over 2. And then adding these two, we have a common factor of e to the lambda t. Then we have an e to the i mu t plus an e to the minus i mu t over 2, which looks like cosine mu t. So this will be e to the lambda t times cosine mu t, which is real. And then we can construct our second real solution, x2 of t, 
by taking the difference of z1 and z2 and then dividing by 2i. Right? So the difference here, again we have a common factor of e to the lambda t, then we have an e to the i mu t minus an e to the minus i mu t over 2i, so theta here is mu t, so that looks like a sine. Okay? So by finding solutions z1 and z2, which are complex solutions, we can take linear combinations of those solutions to find two real solutions. And then the final solution is another uh, linear superposition, c1 times x1 of t plus c2 times x2 of t, or a, say, times x1 plus b times x2, where we have a common factor of e to the lambda t times an a times x1 cosine mu t plus a b times x2. And that becomes our general solution of this differential equation with b squared minus 4ac less than 0 is the solution given by this. Okay, so lambda is the real part of the uh, solution of, of the characteristic equation, and mu is the imaginary part. Okay? So let's solve a, uh, a, a, a specific differential equation to uh, make sure we uh, understand how it works. So we will try uh, x double dot plus x dot plus x equals 0 with initial condition x0 equals 1, x dot of 0 equals 0. Okay? We don't know th what the roots of the characteristic equation are, are yet. We try x equals e to the rt we get r squared plus r plus 1 equals 0. Uh, we cannot factor that. We need to use the quadratic equation. So we get r equals negative b, negative 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 1, minus 4, a, 1, c, 1, divided by 2a2. And these are two roots, which is uh, minus 1 half is the real part, plus or minus the square root of minus 3, so that becomes the square root of 3 over 2 times i. Okay, so we're in the case of complex conjugate roots. We can write down the solution. So x of t equals e to the lambda t, lambda is minus one half, e to the minus one half t times a cosine mu, mu is root three over two, a cosine root three over two t plus b sine root three over two t. Okay, so that becomes the general solution to the differential equation. Then we need to satisfy the two initial conditions. We have x of t. We also need x dot. So x dot, we use the product rule here. So the derivative of the first, minus 1 half, e to the minus 1 half t, times the second, a cosine root 3 over 2 t, plus b sine root 3 over 2t, plus the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of the second using the chain rule will give us a root 3 over 2 on both terms. So we have plus root 3 over 2, the first, e to the minus 1 half t, 
times the derivative of the second without the root 3 over 2, which I've included already. So that becomes minus a sine, cosine goes to minus sine, root 3 over 2t plus b cosine root 3 over 2t. Sine goes to cosine. And now we satisfy the initial condition. So x of 0 is supposed to be equal to 1. And that's equal to e to the 0 is 1 times a times cosine 0 is 1 plus b times sine 0 is 0. So we immediately we get a equal to 1 x dot of 0 is equal to minus 1 half times 1 times a plus 0 minus 1 half a plus root 3 over 2 times 1 times 0 plus b plus root 3 over 2 times b. So we can solve that for b. So root 3 b is equal to a, which equals to 1. So b equals 1 over root 3, which is root 3 over 3, right? Okay, so then we have our solution. So this is the differential equation and the initial conditions up here, and then we've just determined the solution which for completeness then I will write again. So the solution of our differential equation is uh, e to the minus one half t times a which we found to be one cosine root three over two t plus b which we found to be root three over three sine root three over two t and that completes the solution.